Hello and welcome to another podcast of Radio in the Weeds. I'm with my co-host, Scott. Hello there. My name is Matt. And today we are somewhere, somewhere in the world, speaking to you live on the radio. How are you, Scott? I'm great. And I just want to say, even we don't know where we are at this point, because for some reason... The location that we're in can change based on our topics of conversation, which is kind of mad. Yeah, in the in the at the moment we're just in the ether. Yeah, we're just in like it, just a white it, infinite nothingness, ready yeah, to we, be until we decide uh, yeah. where we want to <laughs> say that we are. It's kind of a special little power that we have as radio presenters. It's it's quite cool actually. Yeah, I think everyone's all radio producers have that, don't they? Yeah, I th- well, I, I don't really have any uh, friends, so I don't, I wouldn't know, but I'm assuming that they, they, they have the same thing as us. Oh well, I have millions of friends. And millions, absolutely, oh, well. yeah, and they all, they all can do this. This is that's great. You just take a load of acid, and then what? Ah, see, <laughs> I'm yeah. in infinite nothingness. <laughs> yeah, and that would make sense that all the radio presenters are doing acid. So yeah. You anyway. have exposed them on national, like, live radio, but it's fine. We'll, we'll move on. Some of them just... do seem like they're on some sort of drugs, especially, like, some of the football ones. Obviously, mm. I, don't, I don't follow football, but sometimes I get them on my TikTok. No, I'm, I'm, just... not a, I'm not an alpha male. <sighs> I'm not an absolute heathen. Jeez. I'm I play, a... I watch proper sports, like... I do theatre. Yeah, theatre. <laughs> There's a sport. That, that's that's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the, the proper sport of, of theatre and... And being a thespian, I, I do appreciate the uh, like, rough and tumble of the theatre world. I, I've got into recently watching um, like really shitty clips from like film, like really like B films and C films of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, them trying to act like sportsmen, and they're clearly just like theatre kids, and they don't know how to throw a ball, and they don't know how to like they don't know how to act like a. A sportsman. But well, watching a theatre kid throw a ball is so much more entertaining than watching someone who knows how to throw a ball throw a ball. Oh, definitely, yeah. It's so, I, I think that's what they should do. They should have like the pro, like professional football and stuff like that, and then they should have like the shit lead where like I think you, that. Just, <laughs> you bring in people who have never played in their life yeah. and just watch them. Isn't that the Paralympics? <laughs> I'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um. No, but uh, I think yeah, like the there's the jeopardy of 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 uh, people just being absolute shit, and it would be it would be definitely better. I'd rather watch me and you play football than you know pro footballers. It would be. Do you? I heard a rumor recently on a, an untrustworthy news site. I don't know if it's true, but I heard that the Australians have issued sex as a sport in the Olympic Games. Sex? Sex, yes. Right. I don't know if it's true, but that's... that's. I've heard the grapevine... <clears throat> yeah. ...that um, they're bringing in... I don't know. I don't know. How, how, how would you store that? Is it fastest I, I wins? Was, I was just about to say, I would quite like to be a judge. I think I'd be an excellent judge. <laughs> you know, I've... I've I would call myself, you know, a pro, like not as not at performance, but as a spectator. You know, I think I know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I don't know what you'd score on. I think it would be like kind of like those other sports that are like equestrian and and or like um, what's the swimming one where they do where they just like dance about in a pool. Oh, think, sitting on swimming. Yeah, I think any any Olympic <laughs> you've sport. just you've just. <laughs> Like insulted an entire art form. Like, oh, fuck him. No. Of, of something that's incredibly hard to do as well. Like no, 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 is yeah, not easy. It, yeah, it does look really hard. But I think any Olympic sport that has music blaring in it just doesn't seem legitimate to me. Like where they just like because <laughs> the question does it where the horses are basically dancing. Uh, so do the. Um, I just forgot I forgot the name of it again. Uh, <laughs> synchronized, <laughs> what, synchronized swimming. swimming. <laughs> yeah, so irrelevant. It just went out my brain yeah, straight yeah, away. Yeah, who fucking cares? Um, yeah, I think it's just pointless and weird. Well, if if synchronized swimming can be a sport, why can't dancing? You yeah. know, because well, Not... they, they have the gym 
it's the gymnastic one where they just dance. No, gymnastics is where they do like no, the no, 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 over them. I know. I'm saying that obviously there's that's like proper gym, uh, like gymnastics. But there's the other kind uh, where oh, they you're like about the fake, stupid, fucking gymnastics. Yeah, yeah, the fucking stupid one. <laughs> that's what it's called. They, that's the official they just name. Play music. No, because there was like that really, really famous girl um, who. There was like a free because they, they do it in like uni- universities in America, don't they, or colleges? Um, I, I, do they? Yeah, they 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 do because you see it dance. It's really cringe because the, the girl that does it, or like the guy, I've only seen girls do it. <laughs> uh, oh, of course any- you yeah, have. Of course <laughs> you have. And it's it's really impressive. To be fair, they do like flips and stuff and then they do like they basically do like a gymnastic move and then they'll do a little dance in between and then they'll go like serious mode and then they'll do the flip and then they'll go <laughs> so, dancing so the, the, way, the way you're describing this is I'm, I'm picturing a gymnast doing like a, a triple quadruple backflip and then like just getting on the floor and doing the worm for about 20 seconds yeah. and then getting back up and then doing another backflip yeah, it's basically it, to be fair. No, but it is quite impressive. The, the woman that I'm thinking of, is her name is Caitlin Ohashi. Caitlin Ohashi, shout out to you. Um, and I think she stopped doing it, but the cringe bit is, because obviously like, the other members of her gymnastic team have seen this, her, <laughs> her like, you're right there. <laughs> yeah, excuse me, I've just got the sniffles. Oh, the sniffles, it's fine. Um, the, all, the, all their team in the background know her like what she's doing her like run off by heart so every time she does a little dance move like there's about 15 girls in the background all copying it and it's really cringe is that, is that their only job their backup dancers well i'm assuming they they have their own oh but there's oh so it's sort of like a uh, tag like, team like, like a not, not a tag team i think they all do it individually <laughs> But it would be cool oh. if they did do a tag team. That would be way more interesting. So they have to learn all of their... <laughs> pass the baton, you know. Yeah. That would be good. I think there will be some way in in the Olympics of the year, I don't know, 3000, where it will be like one... This is when they finally... Oh, she's hot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners out there, I've shown a picture of Caitlin Ohashi doing, her, doing the floor routine. It's got 240 million views on YouTube, so... I'm sure plenty oh, of Oh, she just viewers. is having a little, j- like, jig. Yeah, she, she just does a little jig, doesn't she? Yeah, and then she'll go, like, and, all and then serious. There's a fucking, yeah, amazing, like, <laughs> triple, quadruple backflip, and then just does another jig. Yeah, that's that's very odd. It, is that part of it? Or is she just doing gymnastics and she just likes having a little dance? Um, honestly. I feel like it might just be gymnastics and she just likes having a dance. I don't know. I need to turn it off because I'm half listening to you. It's really distracting. <laughs> um, yeah, but... she's not dressed in a lot. And yeah, there's a, there's a very bit. Distracting. There's a bit where she does a uh, sp- the splits, and yeah, I need to turn it off. Um, <laughs> no, what I, what I was going to what I was saying was, I think First in, online, really. in the year in the year two, yeah three thousand when they've finally decided, okay, we're just going to allow drugs to be a part of it because that's what everyone wants <laughs> that, to see that what's to happen, okay. yeah because that's what everyone realistically wants to see because if it's everyone if everyone is allowed to do drugs then it's fine because there's no like people aren't it's not cheating at that point because everyone's doing well, it there's the the side effects to the drugs well if, do you want to be a professional a sportsman if you want to make <laughs> it to the top then yeah but no because so it'll be just more entertaining because rather than doing the 100 meter sprint at like nine seconds, they'll be doing it in like five seconds, and it'll be amazing. <laughs> but and, and with an addition, addition to this would be that they somehow have to make a single Olympian do every single sport in the Olympics. Oh, the ultra Olympian! Yeah, because be really cool. because at that point we've got like brain chips in our head. We're like. Oh, you can course. do you could do like ten thousand hours training in a particular sport in like six hours. Got muscle the, injectors that yeah. make you size of an elephant. They'll be like, right, we're just gonna inject you with like Usain Bolt bolts like <laughs> running sperm. <laughs> sperm, yeah, into your brain and then you're like, Oh, I know how to run now. <laughs> oh, that's definitely how biology works. I think so. 
You just inject sperm into your brain, and then you seep all the power from that person. Yeah, like um, some sort of like you know, like that's, that's how Captain America happened, isn't it? Wait, I'm sorry. Did you say I know how to run now? As as if, <laughs> as if they, they had no idea how to use the lens before. Well, I think Usain Bolt does it in a special way that when you're watching it, you go. I don't know how like as a as like oh, running. How he's doing that. It's like running two point He's like he's got the new update of running. <laughs> That's how he wins, and it, and his name is Bolt. It's just so it's yeah. So perfect. Did he change that, or is that just how? Is it just co- if, like coincidence? If it, it must be coincidence, because if he did change it, then it will. I think he should be stripped of all of his world records. <laughs> <laughs> Because clearly that's cheating, because the name gives him power. Yeah. Should, what do you think his name was before? Usain S- Davis. Slow. <laughs> Usain Slow. I'm trying to think of the was, opposite of fault. And he was like, oh, no, this can't happen. I need to make this change. Usain Trip. Uh, and that was the only reason why he not did it running, was because he changed his name and suddenly he was faster. That's yeah, no, it is, it is his real name. His, his name is Usain Saint cool. Leo. Bolt. Oh, whoa. Don't you have to earn... I don't think you just name yourself Saint. Yeah. Pretty sure you have to earn that. I well, don't know if he has earned that. He's earned the name... It should be Bolt. Saint Bolt. The oh, Saint patron Bolt Saint of cool. running. <laughs> he hasn't done anything, like, charitable. Well, he oh. probably has. In in your in your spare time... He just seems like a nice guy. Oh, I must, you assume so. If, if he's not... I think people that with that much money and that much success, if they haven't been charitable... Then you're just an absolute cunt. Oh yeah, because Definitely. the expectation that is like me. I have not done any charity in my life, but it's kind of well, you know I'm broke, I'm, so. I'm poor, so yeah. So everyone's like oh, that's fair enough. But if I was as rich as Usain Bolt, then you know what? I'd give a couple I, of pennies out. I think um, so. Basically, we we have a little surprise for the listeners, but we're not going to get to that for uh, quite a while. It'll be later on um, in the show. We've got a special yeah, we, guest. We have an exclusive guest. Exclusive. Uh, but we, let's not talk about the interesting part of the podcast, because I have a very controversial opinion that I'd like to put out there. I feel like chariot races should be brought back. Oh, I agree. Right? Yes. For the Olympics, that's the... Fuck Forza. Like... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool you have a, this pinnacle of engineering and technology where you've made a car that goes really fast. Well, the video and game. it's a very... <laughs> no, I meant the whole motorsport in general. I don't know why I said Forza, <laughs> as if it was just the video game. Like, I meant... Like Formula I meant, 1 and stuff. Yeah, yeah F1. Them. F1 and Forza sort of sound like... There's the <laughs> sort of the To a layman, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, F1 I meant. I meant, fuck F1. Because, like... What? It, it's a different experience, isn't it? You can either see this like really peak of engineering sort of masterpiece race around the track mm. and not like touch anyone. You know, occasionally there's crashes, but normally it's sort of yeah, like yeah. you just got to overtake. Or you can watch this rickety ass carriage mm. race around the track with the horses and just fucking smash into everything it sees. Okay, like, I, I have a question in your in this. So obviously you're you're pitching this. It's your yeah, yeah, yeah. it's your baby here. So I've got some questions. So first okay. off, would, would in an interview uh, would the uh, athletes the the what are the cha- the chariot racers? Yeah. And this might seem like a, such a random question and not really relevant, but it's important to me. Will they be wearing, like, modern-day athlete attire, or would they be wearing, like, two hundred, like 100 BC, you know, armour? I feel like they'd be wearing a more... Because mo- they need armour, because they're going to be smashing into shit. Mm. So they need, obviously, a helmet, but they wouldn't have, like, a medieval... They'd, they'd have, like, a racing helmet, because that's safer. And I feel like they'd have a more... Mo- they'd have armour on, mm. as in, like, stuff to protect your body from physical, like, being thrown at a fucking wall. Yeah, they need a cup, basically. Yeah, they that's need, the- like, full... Shoulder pads and plates, like maybe like Kevlar plate. I don't know if that helps against smashing into the wall. But like, but underneath the the really tight lycra that most like athletes wear, you see like you know the 
Yeah, yeah. Maybe it'll be be like a American football get up. Kind of, of like I'm thinking the the Under Armour being like kind of what Katniss Everdeen wears when yes. they're going in the first film where they're going out to that sort little of like, like smooth showcase. plates. Smooth yeah, yeah. Plates of armor. Okay. My second question is. Yeah. Shoot. Um. Would the athlete be strapped down into the carriage? Well, so they're less likely to get. Fl- I don't know what's more dangerous. <laughs> well, exactly, I don't either. Because if you're, because with chariot racing, a lot of people don't know is you, you have one person driving and you have one person that has an assortment of deadly weapons. Okay. And their job is to fuck over the other chariot. I didn't so even they'll think have, of this. They'll have like. Um, flails and spears and like cannonballs to throw and like um, caltrops you know the things you throw on the ground and they pierce the wheels mm. uh, you, they have all them and they're sort of the, the sh- they ride shotgun literally like yes. <laughs> they'll be sh- trying to shoot the other people um, so I don't know if you get speared if you get a javelin <laughs> thrown at you from one of your opponents right is it? I feel like it's better if you can du- like duck out of the True. chariot. I yeah, feel like yeah, it's better because yeah. otherwise, if you've got a seatbelt on and a javelin's coming towards you at a hundred miles an hour, I feel like that's going to be more deadly than being thrown out of a chariot. You could maybe survive being thrown out of a. Chariot. I think either way, it's not a fun day, really. Yeah, but I feel like you'd have it's. M- a better chance of surviving if you have the movement to move out of the way of the projectiles coming mm. towards you. I think we might need to get rid of the weapons and the second guy in the, in the in the 21st century Olympic sport. Oh, but that's like the main the main like. Would it not be fun? fun? It? Also, there is the um. It would the animal be cruelty aspect in... of it. Yeah, maybe you made motorized. Uh... Mm motorized carriages instead of because the horses will get in the way as well so how does that would how would that work that would it be like it's basically a big caravan isn't it <laughs> yeah at that point you just it's, got <laughs> it's pretty much a caravan okay, wait, wait. race but you got but the guy like they on did the back, in top gear yeah yeah but the guy on the back or in the chariot will have to be able to like control the car or the whatever it is the motorcycle this is we, we it's a well, it's, in it's my a, head, but it it does seem. I reckon tricky. we sort of revolutionised the chariot, and we instead have, you know how you have the the drivers on the front bench with the horses, and then yeah. you, you if you have sort of like a um, top down sort of like a pickup truck esque mm. back to it. Yes, and then you have the driver in front with a steering wheel. But it's like you know, not covered by a roof, so it's all out in the open. Yeah. But it's also a car, so okay. you can also you can drive it. But it's like the whole top of the car has been speared off. Yeah. So that everywhere's free and open, and you can chuck shit at each other. Right. This this feels I've... less like chariot racing now. Well, it's a modernised chariot racing, isn't it? Because otherwise, as you said, animal cruelty and death and. We're just making it more... It's still, like... You've you've still got shit to throw at each other. Mm. I feel like... Maybe... If it's not a spear... If it's not a spear and cow chops, At least have, AK. like... <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, you said make have, it modern. <laughs> at least have firebombs, guys. At least have firebombs. Grenade. No, I was thinking... Maybe, like... An elite game of dodgeball. You know how dodgeball is like yeah, an Olympic... If you did that on a fucking car... Right. Okay. I don't Dodgeball <laughs> okay. on a, on carriages racing around a track, and also you can slam your car into each other. And then that wouldn't that not be the best for you? And then we should almost have like digital like okay. This might be a bit of a bit of a detour, but in have you you know have you ever heard of Formula E? Absolutely not. No. no. So it's basically electric. Formula One, so the cars are like fully electric, and okay. it's really, really awful because basically they need to change cars halfway through. I need to rem- <laughs> re- remember what, what I'm gonna get back to. We're still, we're still talking about track racing, but 
Okay, so there's there's a couple of features that are re because it's kind of electric and they want to make some digital things. So there's two things in the sport, which I don't know if it's still in the sport because I don't follow it, but they used to and it's awful. So one thing is the fan boost. So the as fan. as you're watching the race, you can go on your phone, go on the app, and you can press the driver that you want, and then a certain amount of times in the race, the driver that gets the most votes has their car have a, like a little speed boost. Well, that just defeats the whole point of the race. Yeah, I know. It's... Then it's not about skill of the driver. It's about who's. It's a popularity exactly. contest. Exactly. And then there's another. There's another way. Um, another thing that like if a driver goes on a bit of a detour, they can pick up like a speed boost that they can trigger like. So it's around just Mario Kart. Exactly. They're, so they're going back Mario to the chariot, uh, the, the chariot racing, we should have power ups in the track, like digital ones, oh. where like. Yeah. If you drive over it, it scans, it picks up, and then you can like trigger it and hurt and do some some damage to the other drivers. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. Do, I okay. think we should... um, I'm thinking of. We need to think Are of the... some ones. What n new power ups? I was thinking well, because let, I was I thought of one that like maybe you could have the windscreen just go black, but if we're not already <laughs> going to have a windscreen. <laughs> Um, we should have one where it locks your steering wheel and you just go full power to the wall. No, no, the, your steering wheel goes um, like goes in reverse, so left is right and right is left, just for like oh, 10 seconds. Oh, that would actually be really funny. Why haven't they made a... They should make a dough cut arena that does this. Like, that would be so cool. Yeah, they should, like, shouldn't they? where you can fuck up your friend's dough carts and... Like, just... there's one that just completely stops your friend's car for a certain amount of time or... And just... What makes it so he can't slow down or something? <laughs> that was, yeah, that's pretty smart. <laughs> just fucking smack into barriers. That was really funny, yeah. Anyway, you had something you wanted to uh, spring on me. Oh said, yeah, of course. No, I, I just wanted to ask you because you know yeah. we 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 you know we want to be topical and talk about oh, okay. current current things that happen in the world. Didn't realise that was the radio show we were, but okay. <laughs> I just wanted to see what your reaction was when I asked you, um, so what's your opinion on the Israeli-Palestine conflict stuff? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> we don't really need to talk about this. Uh, yeah, I feel like we are treading on the dangerous soils there. I don't know, they're, uh, both just, they, they, they're both got cool names. I feel like when it comes to fucking trees and uh, Israeli and Palestine conflict. I feel like we're more suited to talking about fucking trees. I agree, Scott. I feel like if there are any Palestine or Israeli trees that, you know, we can fuck. Yeah, like the national trees, what we that's spoke about a, last that's time. That's a topic of conversation I'd be down to, to get behind, get in, <laughs> get stuck in with. So I think that's the main issue is that they're, they're, they're just trying to fuck each other's national trees up and it's just... Right. Well, that's just how everything goes, isn't it, in the yeah. end, isn't it? It always ends up to... It always ends trees. up to, I want to fuck your tree. And that's just the way the world works, guys. Mm. Everyone watching, just... You've got to accept sometime in your life someone's going to want to fuck your tree and you can either let them fuck it or you can fight back. Or you could fuck theirs. Or you can, yeah, you can fuck their tree in retaliation, yeah. which is what a lot of people end up doing. Just eye for an and eye. that's what World War Two was about. Yeah. I think we should bring back eye for an eye. <laughs> I thought you were going to say World War Two. No, rather than... I like... we should bring back World War Two, guys. So obviously now, if someone commits a crime, we go, okay, so we're going to put them in prison, we're going to find them or put them in prison for a certain amount of time. We should do an eye for an eye again, which is what they did back in the day, in the good old days, where if you stole some bread off me, I chop your hand off. That's not really an eye for an eye. Well, eye, it's though, like you, it? it's you, a bread for a hand. You use your hand to steal my bread. So there goes your <laughs> there goes your I feel like a, I feel like an eye for an eye would mean you just steal their bread. Yeah, I might know? be wrong. I feel, feel like there's like, also there's also the one where I, I might feels be... like an eye for a heart or something. Or yeah. an eye for a, it's Something much more substantial well, than it's like, lost by the other person. You're like committing adultery by looking at another woman. I, so I, I take out your eyes. eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that isn't uh, very fair. Don't to know, me, well, I personally. think 
this episode is looking back at history and talking about what was good. Well, there's good. There's, there were good things back in the day that we should bring back to the current yeah, day. Yeah, like chariot racing. Like chariot I just racing. feel like if I accidentally like cough on someone and then they remove both of my lungs, <laughs> I feel like that isn't a very fair treatment of you know the mistake that I no, made. No, it'd only be one, obviously. The one lung. right. That's much better. And then it'll be given to like a needy child that needs a new lung. I doubt it. I reckon they'll just throw it away. I'll just fucking yeet it into the. Thing. Yeah, they weren't very back in the day. They weren't very conservative with all the uh, organs that they cut out. No. They normally just left them. Yeah, imagine if they just like all throughout human human history and all the wars and today, all the wars that happened. Oh, this is horrible. I just realised this is a horrible thought. <laughs> it's like they just collect all the bodies rather than burying them. You've politely. got the organ collector going <laughs> the organ in. Organ collector, just come and just steal your organs. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Fuck our special guest. I feel like we should bring in the organ collector. Alright, guys, I'm the organ collector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want your heart and your liver. And we f- freeze it for the the empire. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, hello, Mister Organ Collector. <laughs> How you doing? I'm alright. Uh, have you got any so, organs? I do. I do have many organs. Have you but, committed any crimes or atrocities lately? Uh, no atrocities committed, actually. Mm. Um, so my organs are pretty safe. I I, I want to sort of have an interview with you, Mister Organ Collector. Is, is that your real name? Do you have another name? I do, but I don't like to tell people. So, okay, well, Mister Organ that's, Collector. That's fine. So, Mister Organ Collector. Uh, wh- when did you decide that you wanted to go into this job of collecting organs? Well, my dad collected organs. Right. His dad collected organs. His dad was a baker. He uh, ruined right. the family <laughs> tradition. But his dad was an organ collector. And, oh, right. Uh, I, I, I still make bread as a little... Family heirloom. Yeah, side hobby. Side but, hobby. Um, it's good to have a hobby. Yeah, yeah, to keep on the family tradition of that maniac who didn't have you ever wanna... baked? Have you ever baked organs? Sorry, I interrupted you there, but I'm no. curious if the baking has anything to do with the organ collector, if mm. they're completely separate. No, we, we need the organs. Oh. What? What for? For the army. <laughs> Can you elaborate, please? So we have an old army underground. Okay. Oh, so you have a private army? No, this it's not. Like a... It's not my army. Okay. I work for the guy, the man, the man himself. <laughs> okay. The D O double G. There's an underground organization <laughs> that you collect audience for. Yes. <laughs> so what do they do with the audience? They shove them in to soldiers. And we hope they become more powerful. Because if you've got four lungs, then <laughs> then you're just stronger, aren't you? <coughs> yeah, that's definitely how it works. And all the women in my family, mm-hmm. they can't become organ collectors. Oh, it's a patriarchal so, thing. Yeah, so do you know what we do to them? What? Do you collect their organs? We collect their organs. We oh, kill them, okay. put them on the table. Obviously, we have to let them grow to maturity first, otherwise the organs are pointless. Right. And then we take them, and then we cut them up, and then we keep their organs. So you're a very patriarchal uh, organisation, but you don't have a problem with putting a woman's uh, organ into a man. Correct. That's kind of that's quite progressive of you, to, like considering well, the fact that you're murdering women. And we don't put organs. the female organs into the soldiers. We put them into the... Um, you know the workers of the facility, okay. because obviously so, they don't need super strong lungs to to sweep the floors and make the food. Yeah, well, I'm, don't you, um, you're a baker. You do make the food. Well, as a hobby, I can't make the food for the whole facility. I have to make the food just for myself. Okay, so you just collect the organs. For the facility, this... yes. Okay. For the army, we've got so underground. What's... So what's this underground army? Do you have a Do you have a plan in mind? Are you going to overthrow somewhere? I... Oh. Fuck any trees? Again, it's the master who's going to overthrow 
the world you see. Um, right, the whole world, I do. Yeah, starting with starting with Eastbourne. Uh any particular reason why? We like the name Eastbourne. Oh, okay. Because I didn't, Master didn't know Eastbourne existed. I, he thought only Westbourne existed, which is the one everyone knows. Right. And I was like, Master, did you know there's a thing called Eastbourne? And he loved it so much. He went <laughs> holiday there, and now we're starting oh, with Eastbourne. Yeah, that's nice. Just, so, just to let you know, if you um, if you're picturing what I look like, because obviously, yeah, of course, of course, we're on a we're on a call right now, and you can't see what. I kind of look like the child snatcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. You know, that's literally what I was picturing by hearing your voice. <laughs> so glad I was right in that assumption. Yes, just uh, he was a, uh, he was a, uh, my he was my father's 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 father. Oh wow! Uh, and he, uh, we cl- we did snatch child children, but then you realised they weren't strong enough to put organs in the soldiers. Yeah, so you yeah. moved to. To men, we just realised um, there was no actual benefit to to child snatching, really. Yeah, and it gave you a bad name as well. I think. Yeah, no, I think everyone to be labelled a child snatcher. Yeah, I think everyone was, was assumed we did we did weird things with the, the yeah. children, but obviously we didn't. I mean, any time you yeah. snatch a child, people assume it's sexual. Sometimes you just want to steal the organs. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like being an organ, uh, organ harvest, organ snatcher. What what's your preferred uh, verb for what um, you do to the organs? Well, <clears throat> organ sucker. <laughs> so is, is that how you get out of them? Yeah, you well, just I've got a big no, no, not with my mouth. You, uh, you I just, <laughs> are you? Have I just we got a machine. You might... You might be like, you know, you might have so many lungs in you, you could do that. Yeah, I've got a no. I have, I do not have any additional organs. Oh, so you don't, you don't live with a lisp though. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so you're very charitable in your organ sucking. Yes. You give it to everyone else. I, so I what... give it to my master, so we can use them for the army. And he delegates them out between the soldiers. Yeah, he's got lots of organs, bloody hell. Oh, I uh, can imagine. He looks like the fucking... Uh... 18 hearts, blah. <laughs> Jeez. Is he quite a big man, then? He's Yes, he's, uh, he's also 600 years old. Oh, wow. So it works, then? The yes. organ thing works. That's astounding. So what machine do you... How, how does it... Take me through the process of sucking okay. out someone's organs. So we... So do you know what a chariot is? Um, yes. Yes. So imagine a more um, so futuristic chariot. <laughs> and then on the back of it... Like we've got really? I can't, I can't imagine that. Can you please describe it for me? So it's kind of like a car. With, oh, yeah. With, like a truck. Like, a, like an American oh. truck. Oh, with it's cut in half, so there's no top on it to make yeah. it obviously look like a chariot. Can I just say that sounds like such a smart idea? I know, um, right? <laughs> like it was my revolution, yeah, my father's idea. Because uh, before it? him, he, we were just using horses, and it's what? uh, yeah, we what kept, a coincidence. Yeah, what the, a coincidence. the horses that had like seventeen lungs, and and uh, you know, like um, what's that horse called from Lord of the Rings? Uh, Shadow Facts? Yeah, the one with lots of legs. Is that right? Uh, no. Uh, I don't know what the fuck you're on about there. <laughs> My mistake. Um, he, had, he had 18 Caterpillar legs. Caterpillar Man, I think, um, uh, is what it was called. Yeah, the human... Sorry, I meant the horse centipede. Anyway, um, we do lots of experiments with animals. Obviously, before we start testing on humans, we have to do on... As a, as children, like me growing up, learning how to organ harvest, <laughs> we had to do it on little squirrels and little guinea oh, pigs okay. and rats, and and then as I get older, you got to, you got to do it on a dog, oh, and a lovely. cow. So was that there was that sort of a coming of age thing? Yeah, that yeah. You did it on a human or no? Yeah, it was. I I was seventeen when I did my first human. Are they alive? Or oh, no, dead? they're obviously dead. So you're not a murderer, so you're just an organ <coughs> no. sucker. We go to battlefields, remember. 
Yeah. And we take you... the the uh, we got it's a big it's kind of like a big vacuum cleaner. Oh, Which... so you just you just set it off and it does it automatically. No, it's there's a bit of work. Okay, so yeah, so take me through. You, you must be very well networked to just go to all these battlefields. Yeah, presumably, we... like. Pretty recently, after the people have died, yeah, we have, a, we have a very large tunnel complex under the, <laughs> under the going, earth, going everywhere for the whole earth. That's yes. that's insane. Yeah, we some people like to call us the Mole Men, but that's right. a, a, a slur. A Twitter, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a slur. Um, so if you do call it me, that uh, that's the end of this interview. No, it's fine. I will. I will never talk, call you that. That's fine. It's good. Uh, do you have a uh, a collective title for the ordinance, the army? Do you have a name, or are you just the underground it's army? It's the uh, the men of uh, lower evolution. The men of a uh, lower evolution. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. It it feels like you're setting yourself a bit short there. Well, uh, yeah. Well, we need we need that's why we need the organs to help us along. You don't have a lot of self confidence in in yourselves, did you? You call yourself a low evolution. That's not very nice. Well, t- to yourselves. I didn't call myself that, but that's just what you're called, and you've just got to go along with it now. Cause it's yeah, because we've got there's the there's the we call we call you lot the um, the sky monkeys. Oh. See that sounds like a daughter to do Well, it is because we wow. we are okay. we are planning to declare outright war on all of you. And then, yeah, I'm surprised you were going to this interview considering the hostility. N- nobody listens have. to this. <laughs> uh, I think I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. No, so so if they found out that you were talking to me, would they not be happy about that? Um, I think they'll look at. Your your listen to the figures, listen to the figures, <laughs> and then they'll realise, oh, it's it's fine. It's not a threat. Because no. <laughs> okay. if you start going around telling everybody, oh look, <laughs> there's there's a secret conspiracy of people underground stealing people's organs, making an army ready to conquer Earth. I, yeah, I have a feeling <laughs> they won't sn- they won't believe you. <laughs> Snooping suspicion, yeah. The- I think I'm crazy, yeah. Yeah, I'm not and an idiot. I mean, it's blowing my mind that that I'm learning about this whole new world. So, if you would, can you please take us through the process? Of, you said there was quite a bit of work in setting yes, out someone's it's, audience. So it's you, not an easy job. So you've just arrived at the battlefield. What's the first point of call that you do? So, we need to find complete specimens. Because mm-hmm. on the battlefield, especially nowadays, God... They're all broken apart. It's not very nice. Yeah, it must be hard now. We need to find complete specimens, find them. I think my voice is going all over the place right now. <laughs> and then we... It's basically like a like a, a hoover or a vacuum cleaner, about four times the size of your traditional house one. <clears throat> that was the heavy. Me. Yeah, well, it's on the back of the chariot. Oh, you bring the, so the tunnels are quite big. You bring the chariot through the yeah, tunnel. Yeah, yes, they are. Yes, yes. And on okay. the end of the the sucky parts of the vacuum mm. cleaner, it's got some s- s- spikes on it that can penetrate into the body. Okay, so you don't go through like the mouth or the nose or anything. You just stick it right in there. Yeah. So depending on what organ we want, and um, yeah. And then you just sucks it right out. Yes. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty. That's pretty. T- Do you use it as a um, a medical thing, at all? So you use it to suck the organs out of people. But is there any time that? Uh, oh, which you which we implant it into people? You mean? Into into like your soldiers to like. Yes, I don't I, deal with that sort of. Um, that's not my expertise. I, I'm a, a, a organ harvester. Uh, uh, I'm not an uh, okay, organ so, implanter. So, so there's a different <laughs> set of people who's yes, obviously, jobs are yes, organ implanters, right? That makes sense. 
Yeah. Is it just your family, or is there a whole host? Is it an occupation, or is it sort of just your family that specialises in this? Well, there has been attempts to get more people to be organ okay. harvesters, but uh, between me, you, and me, they are. Uh, me, they, you, and me. <laughs> yes, they they seem to disappear. So, oh, we'll keep that hush hush. Right. So, okay. Yes. I feel like there's a, a sinister sort of implication there. Why? Do you want to be an organ harvester? I No, I don't. Good. I can think of nothing worse than being an organ it, well, harvester it's, slash sucker. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice job. It's um, it's quite, it's quite um, cathartic. What's the pay like? What's pay? You don't get pay? What's paid? Pay. How do you get food Did the, does the army provide you with food um, and like no. a place to sleep I, we no, eat no. The, the rest of the body that we oh Jesus <laughs> yes so you just suck out all the all the, organs the valuable and then, bits and then, and then do you touch it at least touch the body um, oh. what's that no what's, so you just what's the, what's the what's like cooking? when you when you heat I like, something up. I like the bread. I forgot I will make bread. <laughs> yes, yes, you you do have an understand. I don't know why you're lying and acting like you don't know what heating shit up is. Sorry, because I'm... Because uh, you, yes. you, you have a hobby making bread. Yeah, so. we, I just, we, didn't call, we don't call it cook. We call it bake, <laughs> obviously. Oh, yeah, obviously, and you have no idea what to do. Yeah. So do you bake the humans? Um, yes, we do. <laughs> In your little oven, you bring them back to your underground lair. Um. Well, we make bread with them. Oh, so they're the ingredient you use for the bread. Yeah, with flour. With flour, of course, and, and yeast and yeah, and all the other egg things, egg bread you, things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you put do you put egg in bread? I, I'm not a bread. I'm not a baker, but neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> Just not very good, you are, So, what else do you. Just out of curiosity. I think this uh, interview is going on way too long. No, no, no. Just, just one, one more question. question. Okay, one, one more question. Uh, okay. Can you please list all the specific ingredients that you that you made into your bread? Okay. So, got the body of the. The body, yeah. yeah. The whole body. You don't turn it up, you just. Yeah, well, we take the bones out, obviously. Oh, obviously, yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just a human body with no bones and no organs, so just uh-huh. the rest of it, basically. And then do you roll it up? Um, and then we put, roll it up. Yeah. Yeah, we do that too. <laughs> okay. And then we, we basically, you know how to make bread, we just make bread of it. Uh- <laughs> Do you, but you put eggs in it. Do you put anything else in it? Uh, milk. Milk? Yeah. And, Yeast. Uh, flour. S- raise, self-raising flour. Oh, that's lovely. So you've got, you're, you're pretty well stocked down there. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has been a lovely interview. We've learned a lot from the underground people. Yes. Um, I appreciate you coming on. No, it was no a, a spur of the moment thing, so thank you for accepting the call. Yeah, you it just was, sort of. Uh, I'm a bat. Yeah, you just sort of called randomly as soon as me and Matt started mentioning you, which is. Yeah, we we are. I listen. I'm like your only listener, really. Oh well, I appreciate that. Thanks. It, it gets uh, it gets both boring, harvesting bodies. I've I've listened to. All, I finished all of the Twilight books, and uh, I've. I ran out of things to listen to, so uh That was it. It's just the toilet books and then you've you've given up basically. Well, you've yeah. up when I finished it when I finished the Twilight books it was like well, if you like the Twilight books you might like this. <laughs> I didn't realise our radio show was uh, similar to the Twilight books, but Yeah. Um That's... there's a there's a big crossover to, of the fans. Oh wow! Wow, that's something you learn every day, isn't it? Like, yes, that's that's pretty anyway, immense. Anyway, gotta go harvest some bodies. Yeah, I'll let you get back to organ harvesting. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Ukraine now. See ya. Oh God. Okay. Bye. <laughs>
And that was uh, the Alden Harvester slash Sucker. He didn't really decide on the name, but uh, no, he couldn't, could he? No. That was a that was a lovely little interview he did there. Um, yeah, I'm, Matt, I'm, you, you I'm actually went and jealous. just you jealous went to sleep to. for a while there. Yeah. You just curled up on the floor. You missed him, but he was a he was quite a nice bloke. Was he? Yeah. Did you learn uh, learn much? I learned a lot. I learned that um, there's a pseudo underground organization that's plotting to overthrow us, and that um, they they bake dead bodies into bread. Um, oh, and he's also he's he's our only listener as well. So, oh, as well, I did want to meet that one person. Yeah. So, but you missed him now. No, I mean but next time I'll get him. It did seem like a stand-up bloke, although I I uh, he does want to overthrow the world. Well, who doesn't really? Yeah, I mean, I, oh, I should have told him about fucking trees because he probably doesn't know about that. Well, he, if, did, he um, might, he might not was... even know what a tree is. No, he probably doesn't if he lives underground. Yeah, but it, it might be good to actually keep that information from him because that's he can't talk to the world unless he fucks a tree. True. And if he doesn't know about yeah. fucking trees, then, they won't he, know, then yeah. he won't be able to talk to the world. But this has been quite. A, we'll have to get our um, other guest on another time. Yeah, he'll because, be he'll be more angry, I think. Yes, we, we he has been on the line for the last half hour trying to call us, mm. and he sent me many threatening messages. But uh, <laughs> I don't really care. It's, a, it's only bloody Jason Waller. He, I hope he does. What? Whoa! Whoa! What's he gonna do? <laughs> just spoiled the surprise. Oh shit! Oh, you the beep that. Piece of <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> I fuck you, Dave. <laughs> oh well, well because I ruined the surprise. We'll just won't have him on. We'll just tell him, message him. Oh, I think we'll have him on. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I reckon, I reckon we'll have him on. Anyway, yeah, if, if anyone wants to listen to the Bam podcast and uh, if, as a bit of um, light listening before our interview to kind of catch up on the um, Bam verse, Lord, Lord knows we won't. Yes, because we won't. We we will <laughs> ask him all the questions we need to in our interview. <laughs> With very limited knowledge about him or all the yeah. things he does. I think this this <laughs> this it's the correct interview style. Oh is yeah. To go in the interview with absolutely no information because I don't even really know who he is. But no, I I just know he's a, a angry little man. So so we would we sh- we should clarify. Um, not Jason Waller. Jason Waller's translator, because Jason Waller, as we know, is a dog. Yes, yes, so of it's, course, yes. So it's, his, it's actually his translator. But, yeah, yeah. so uh, we will be interviewing him That also shortly. looks like a dog as well. Oh, yes. That is... But, like, that, he's but a there, is a, there is a distinction. Looks, yeah, there is, obviously, yeah. There's a big distinction. One of them is... Because the dog is the one that actually... He, the, he, that's the one that makes the money. Yeah, Tyler Rooks. Yeah, that has been a lovely little interview. Uh, we'll get Jason Waller's translator on in a little bit. It's definitely harsh, the vibe. You didn't like it? I thought it was quite pleasant. I thought it was a... Well, uh, I did pass out for, you know, 15 well, minutes. Well, you didn't You didn't hear most of it, but it was introduced in a new cultural world, and I and mm. I quite think the viewers can appreciate that. But, anyway... Well, what were uh, we discussing before? We were discussing you? chariot races... Do you know? Do you know the other people have their have a chariot exactly like the one we destroyed? <laughs> no way. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. I was like, that's blown my mind. It's wow, cool, mind. great minds think alike. Obviously, and this on, has been a lovely, note. lovely little interview uh, <laughs> with the Orden donor, or the Orden uh, harvester, and we had a little conf- conflab about uh, what we want the Olympics to be. So yes, I think it's been very productive. It has. Oh, he's back! <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's the Harvester. Oh, sorry. I, I, I was trying to call. I thought I was talking to Jason. <laughs> we have some business to sort out. Sorry, I was on the wrong line. Sorry, see ya. Okay, was, bye-bye. I, well, I wonder what business uh, Jason and... <laughs> Jason Waller was, and the Orton Harvester. Well, I don't know, Matt, but maybe we'll find out. Mm, maybe. In a future recording. <laughs> We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. That's it for oh. today. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, Scott, for being with me. You're very welcome, babes. See you next time. <laughs>